In this movie, we're going to take a high-level overview of the Encore CS4 user interface. Now, if you're at all familiar with Premiere Pro or After Effects, you're going to find many points of similarity in Encore CS4. These three applications are tightly integrated. They're designed to work together closely, and they're also designed to work in more or less the same way in terms of how you set up the user interface to make your workflow as efficient as possible. Now, of course, across the top here, we have the various menus, which are going to control the different parts of our project, and we'll come to these as we need to throughout the training. We also have a simple toolbar across the top left portion of the user interface, and then we have a series of panels that control the various bits of media and information that we're going to be using to create our projects. Now, one of the more similar areas that you're going to find in all three is the project panel here, and we'll talk about this in more detail a little bit later. But the project panel, like Premiere Pro and After Effects, is where we're going to gather all of our media for creating our DVD or Blu-ray disc. And in general, for most of the topics that we're going to be covering, the process for creating a specific item is going to be more or less exactly the same for a DVD or Blu-ray disc. It's only when we get into specialized menus and certain functionalities where things will differ a little bit. And of course, when we output those projects, they'll also be a little bit different. We also have a monitor that is very similar to what we had in Premiere Pro and After Effects. And here, the main bulk of the work that we're going to do is going to be seen in the menu panel right here. Right now we're looking at a menu called Abstract 2, and this has been opened in the NTSC color or television standard. And here to the right we have a Properties panel, and this works in much the same way as the Properties panels you'll find in Dreamweaver or InDesign, where you can highlight an object in your project and get a series of contextual options to apply to that object. This is a very important area and this is where we're going to make sure that when users start clicking buttons on their DVD remote, the things that we intend to happen will actually happen. Also, much of the troubleshooting we'll take care of in the Properties panel. At the bottom left, we have a Timelines panel that will work in much the same way as the Timeline in Premiere Pro, excepting that it's a much simpler process because there are fewer things that you can do to a Timeline in Encore CS4. We also have a Layers panel, as you might expect to see in Photoshop. And the reason for that, which we'll also get into later, is that the menus we're going to be creating here are essentially Photoshop files. And finally, we have a Library panel, which is a great way to get a head start on a project if you need to produce something quickly and don't have a lot of time to create all of your own menu items. Now, like Premiere Pro and After Effects, the way that you can group these panels and organize them works in exactly the same way. If I want to take this resource central panel and move it in between the timeline and layers, I can just click and drag on the tab. And when I get this little blue box that you see here on the right side of the timeline or the left side of the layers panel, I can just release the mouse and this will create a new space. By clicking and dragging on the areas between the panels, we can resize them relative to one another and we also have some ability to undock the panels, maximize them, and so forth. We also have some workspace options, which we'll talk about in the next video. So it's a very straightforward user interface. And as I mentioned, if you have any familiarity with Premiere Pro or After Effects, you're going to pick it up right away.